The great thing about ice fishing in the winter is the whole lake is yours. You don't have to have a boat. You don't have to have any fancy equipment. A minimum amount of equipment and you can be ice fishing. Who knows, you might pull a big one through the ice. Bob Garner working a tip up here for a northern pike. All right, not bad. There it is. That's one form of ice fishing. We're going to go through several and take you all around the state, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time to go ice fishing on Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodlands of the north, it's history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again at all that waits the sportsmen in the state of Michigan. And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in this state of Michigan There are so many ways to go ice fishing and so many places to go And so many ways to get there When the ice is a foot thick or more well, like it gets on Saginaw Bay and Houghton Lake, you'll see quite a few cars and trucks driving right onto the ice. Now, the four-wheel drive of the Bronco isn't necessary as long as there's snow, but it's a comfortable way to get out a few miles. And the easiest way to put a hole in the ice also uses a gasoline engine. You can use a long chisel-like spud and chip away by hand, but when you have to drill a lot of holes, and when the ice is two, sometimes close to three feet deep, there's no getting around it, a power auger is the way to go. If you want real comfort, fish from a shanty. That's the deluxe way of ice fishing. You can buy them or build them. Here's a homemade four-holer for two anglers. No tackle is more basic, simple, and inexpensive than ice fishing rods, reels, and lures. Now, these are the types they use on Saginaw Bay, and different parts of the state have local favorite types of tackle. I'm fishing with Gail Bedore from Quantico and he's showing me the ropes on catching these Saginaw Bay perch. You know oh, come on. Oh, did I lose the line there? Oh, he's over in my hole. Come on. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I thought he was going to be a huge one. I had such great expectations. Well, perch may not give a big battle, and they're not huge fish, but they're fun to catch. And when they're hitting, it's not difficult to catch a bucket full. This is the day's worth, huh? Yep, this is it. Hey, this isn't too bad. I'm still still sticking it out here to the bitter end, uh, seeing if I can get one more, but dump them out there. We got some nice ones. Great Lakes perch. Do they? Take them home where it's warm, fillet them, and they are tops. Now, the large cousin of the perch is the walleye, delectable to eat, and the nice thing about walleye is they grow larger. Two, three pounds is an average size. They catch on the Saginaw and Titabawasi rivers. Looks dangerous with that open water running nearby, but the fishermen are on solid ice, and one fellow explains his walleye techniques to me. But these are nice walleye. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what, what, how do you catch them? Uh, jigging with a jig and with a minnow on it. Well, Dip let's see which one. You have two rigs here, I see. This is the one that uh, caught these two? Right. That's, uh, Looks like a little Cleo. A little something. Cleo. Oh, that's what it is. A little blue and white Cleo, and uh, you put a minnow on it and uh, split shot to hold it down. Jigging in the river current right on the bottom, that's where the walleye are. In recent years, walleye have become more common, more popular among anglers, and bigger. Many lakes throughout the state hold walleye, but Saginaw Bay and the rivers around Midland and Bay City produce some real whoppers and lots of them. Here we go, there's a happy angler with a nice walleye. Now, many winter fishermen are content with catching panfish from the small inland lakes and ponds. Ed Boldazar from Ed's Bait Shop in Bath is using a typical crappie technique. Small minnows under a bobber are a favorite. Watch this bobber go down. After that bump, it slowly submerges it shows you how sluggish fish are in 36 degree water. They don't move fast and they don't move too far. For crying out loud, they're cold down there. Water is just a few degrees above freezing. Crappies can be found suspended in the tops of submerged trees, so you don't have to go right to the bottom to find them. They're a small fish, a pan fish like a bluegill, not difficult to catch and good to eat. But if you want to catch bluegill, 
switch to a tiny teardrop lure and fish it on the bottom, or at least start fishing there and come up slowly. Add a little flavor to the teardrop with a bit of live bait. Not a minnow, use a grub of some sort, a corn borer, or mousy or waxworm, something small to give the teardrop just a little bit of flavor. Only thing that makes this difficult is the temperature of your hands. Mittens or a muff or at least a towel to dry your wet hands off will help a lot. Some anglers carry Coleman lanterns, not so much for the light as for the heat. You can use a cork bobber, but some fishermen like the spring bobber. Your lightweight two pound test line goes through the eye into the spring, and when one of these slow moving bluegills picks up your bait, you'll see that spring twitch. There we go. That's the signal to pick up the little ice fishing rod and set the hook snugly. Now don't horse the bluegills in too fast with that light line. Just keep it tight and they'll come right up through the hole. Watch the edge of the hole though. Many nice fish are lost right there. But there's your winter bluegill. Now going for the bigger predator fish. Northern pike is one of the favorites. It can be done using a tip up. Mike Copenhaver from Ludington shows us a typical okay, wooden tip up that works okay. well for northern pike. The flag flies when the fish pulls on the line, trips off a trigger. And now we go down here. See, the reel on a tip-up is set under the water, and so it won't freeze up. Now, the bait, usually a shiner minnow at least three inches long, is dangling underneath, just above the weeds. The northern pike are caught in shallow water, often just three, four feet deep. Now, what's the charm of tip-up fishing? Well, the tip-ups are set while you watch from a warm shanty or a vehicle. And when the flag flies, you run out, make sure the pike is moving away from you, then set the hook. You do all this by hand. And there's no telling what's on the other end. It could be big or small or nothing at all. That's what makes it exciting. You know, that's what happens when people catch fish. Let go with your left hand so you yeah. don't have a big mess. There you go. All, all right. right, not bad. That's a keeper. Yep. Just, just legal. I'll be doggone. Pike have to be 20 inches to be legal in most lakes. They fight a good battle, and from cold water, they're great eating. And there's another way to fish pike through the ice. That's spearing. This you have to do from a shanty because the hole in the ice needs to be in the dark for two reasons. The fish can come to your decoy and not be spooked by the sunlight and your motion seen through the hole in the ice. And also, you can see down through the hole best when you're in a dark shanty. Now, the wooden decoys are often handmade by carvers who have elevated fish decoys to an art form that are also used to attract pike under the ice. You have the spear by your side, tied to a rope so you don't lose it. And there is a technique to tossing a spear through a hole in the ice. Not as easy as it sounds, especially when you're new to spearing and your heart's pounding when you see that pike. I got him, I got him. Don't I? I missed. Spearing, definitely a hit or miss type of fishing in Michigan outdoors. Just in case ice fishing doesn't suit your style this weekend, maybe you could get out some of that canned salmon from this summer. Evelyn Ranke from St. Charles sent us a recipe for salmon noodle casserole. Kathy Beitler, you whipped this together in no time at all. And it does call for canned salmon. And there it is. It doesn't look real appetizing like that, but it is great. It, you know, if you don't have canned salmon, tuna fish. Oh, yeah, definitely. Can, would, would slide and right you do want to drain it because it's quite oily in itself. You can make a white sauce and then go ahead and add mixed vegetables. And you don't pre-cook those. You just go ahead and add them to the white sauce. Rather frozen. Yeah. All carrots and... And noodles. Now, that. you do want to pre-cook your noodles mm -hmm. and then just stir all this in together. And your white sauce is just flour and your regular basic white sauce, butter and milk. And you're going to go ahead and add cheese and it'll give it just a little bit of color and a little bit of texture here. And the salmon. And you don't want to really dig around that salmon too much because it breaks up in quite small chunks to begin with. And otherwise, it'd be real, real fine. Did I miss the spices? No, there's none. Absolutely, positively, no salt, anything in this. And it's great. And then put it into a grease casserole dish and cover and bake it for an hour at 350. Hmm. And then take it back out and put cheese on top. And there it is, just great like that. But the cheese really does add something to the top. There's then, the topping, yep, back in the oven. Back in the oven, to just let it get good and hot and bubbly. Salmon noodle casserole. Now, I bet you could probably do this at, from the taste of it. You could... Oh, lake trout, 
steelhead, walleye, just about anything. Rabbit really. and squirrel. Rabbit, yes. I bet anything that wasn't white. red, dark mm -hmm. meat. Yep, just would a work nice well. white light meat. Now, what does Dr. Garner, our our this, culinary <laughs> this, expert, yeah, who's always just wanted to say yum yum, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Uh, you know, this recipe looks good. It smells good. I mean, look at it. Look at it. It's very. Oh, yeah. It's a very colorful recipe. Mm -hmm. It looks good. It smells good. But it really just tastes great. Very, very delicate oh, in spite is. of the pasta. Mm -hmm. It is very good. What do you think, Kath? What oh, about I the think nutrition? It's great with um, no salt in it and not frying it. Boy, you can't go wrong. Nutrition-wise, it is nutrition. just excellent. It has little lima beans in it, and I'll bet you the kids will eat it too. <laughs> 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 Who knows? That's a That's good right. idea. A recipe that we think is a winner for everybody, the salmon noodle casserole. It is. It's a winner. This letter comes from Dennis McSwiggan of Muskegon, Michigan. He says, I have good friends who are Michigan Ottawa Indians, the Grand River Band. What are their legal rights concerning hunting and fishing, not gill netting, under Michigan and federal laws? Well, Dennis, treaty rights have been a controversial issue in the past, with the most controversial one being the Treaty of 1837 that covered most of Michigan's Great Lakes waters. It was resolved in June of 1985 at a signing ceremony in Sault Ste. Marie. As to the Grand River Band of Michigan Ottawa's, according to the DNR, they have no special rights because they are not officially recognized, and since they have no exceptional rights, they must abide by all hunting and fishing regulations, just like any other citizen. Looking back on deer season when the temperature was above freezing, Tim Kleinhart from Clare took this nice 10 point hunting around home on opening morning just at sunrise. Bill Daimler from Sand Lake took a 12 point hunting from a ground blind with his bow on November 1st. It's a 20 inch spread, a Kent County buck. And deer season occasionally produces some trophy fish. Here's a muskie caught on November 16th. Mike Wilkins. Got a 24-pound, 13-ouncer fishing a minnow in Lake St. Clair. Mike and Mrs. Wilkins. Now, how come you're, he makes you carry the fish? Well, because he looks bigger with me. <laughs> oh, the fish. That's that's a good idea. I'm little. Do you ever fish with Mike? Oh yeah. I'm trying to get my big one, but I haven't got it yet. Were you fishing with him the day he got this one? No. I uh, got to hold him while he took the picture. Oh, you did? She took the good pictures. So. She took the good picture. What's yeah. the story behind the 25-pounder? Well, I was walleye fishing, actually, uh, with a, a imitation repellent, you know. And uh, it, I couldn't believe when that thing hit. It just come up like a submarine and started going down. He was on a pier? Yes, I was fishing on the pier at 10 Mile Road in, in Lake St. Clair, right on the shore. And uh, when it hit, it just come up like a submarine and started going down. And all I had eight pound test line. So how long did it take? <laughs> about 15 or 20 minutes. Thank God for the guy. I, I wish I knew his name so I could thank him. The man with the net. I was so excited when I caught him. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to even thank him. You took off with the fish, huh? Yeah, I took off and got out of there. <laughs> well, way to go. It's an outstanding <laughs> fish. Congratulations for that. Almost a 25 pounder. Mike Wilkins. <laughs> thank you. Mike may have caught it, but Lisa Wilkins deserves plenty of credit for hoisting it for the photo. A deer season fishing award that makes both Mike and Lisa Wilkins our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Anglers of the Week. Michigan Outdoors is moving. We're changing the station where we produce the show from WKAR in East Lansing to WCMU on the Central Michigan University campus in Mount Pleasant. And while you will notice a different look on Michigan Outdoors, the same stations will continue to carry us at the same time, so stay tuned. In December was quite a month for the DNR law folks. The beginning of the month, they captured a large Canadian fishing tug illegally netting fish in Michigan waters, and then topped that off by arresting 23 people in a Huron County undercover investigation for selling sport fish and venison. DNR Law Chief Herb Burns says their new policy of requiring everyone involved in a hunt to have a license started out to apply to bear hunters only, but will now include raccoon hunters. Also looking at the raccoon hunter, as you know, that's another generally a group type activity where one person handles a light, somebody else carries a gun, somebody else handles the dogs and so forth. So the policy obviously applied to them. What we didn't intend to make it apply to is like you've just mentioned, if I take my dog out hunting uh, squirrels or pheasants or whatever and somebody wants to come along, uh, we didn't intend and certainly not going to enforce the policy to that extent that they need a license. 
Our home station for the last six years has been here at WKR on the Michigan State University campus. It's a tough place to leave, a very tough place to leave. We made a lot of friends here among the very talented staff. And while it's impossible to thank everyone individually on the air tonight, Fred, Kathy, and I want every one of them to know how grateful we are for their help and their friendship. Three individuals must be singled out, however, for their unique contributions. Special thanks are in order for Oyar Zupotniaks, a WKR cameraman who shot most of the videotape you saw on the show. And Tim Zico, who very ably directed Michigan Outdoors for five of the six years we've been on the air. And last, but probably most important, Kay Ingram, WKR's program manager, whose love of the outdoors and good sense led her to take a chance on putting Michigan Outdoors back on the air after a long absence. PBS, hunters and fishermen, along with all of us here at Michigan Outdoors, owe her a large debt of gratitude. This just might be the year that you catch that trophy fish you've been after. You know, the big one that doesn't get away? In Michigan, we have 50 species of fish the DNR recognizes in its Master Angler program. All have a minimum weight to qualify for a DNR Master Angler patch. Now the fish must be weighed on certified scales and the species verified either by taking the fish to a DNR biologist or by sending in a photo with your entry form, which is available from the DNR. Now there's no charge to enter the DNR's Master Angler program. It's just for the challenge and the fun of it. This year, the DNR has changed the weight minimums though in seven categories. The weights go up from nine pounds to 10 pounds for walleye, up one ounce to one pound 13 ounces for yellow perch, and up from two and a half to three pounds for white suckers. Too easy to make the 1987 minimums, according to the DNR Fisheries Division. Nearly 300 entries last year in these three categories alone. But the weights are coming down in four categories that had only six entries total. Brown and black bullheads down to one and a half and one pound four ounces. Rock bass down to a pound. And Chinook salmon dropping from a 30 pound minimum to 27. Now hopefully this will boost entries in these categories in 1988. Now all DNR Master Angler winners automatically receive our Stroh's Fishing Award too. Fishing and hunting don't have to be strenuous activities, but stress and strain among older sportsmen is why six out of seven drop out by the time they reach 65. Something as simple as walking along a stream bank and gripping a fishing rod becomes painful for about 15% of our population, especially as we get older. Now the culprit with these aching joints, it's called arthritis. There are about 100 different forms, but basically it's joints that become inflamed and hurt. Knees, wrists, fingers, shoulders, ankles, these are typical problem areas. Now cold weather and humid weather make it worse for many folks. Their joints ache not just when they move them, but even when they're sitting around. So you can imagine how pain like that affects a person's ability to enjoy well, walking in the woods or casting a fishing rod. Now you, Raj McCarville, before your accident 11 years ago, your legs I, amputated. Uh, I couldn't spell arthritis. You couldn't spell it, and you didn't worry <laughs> yeah, about it, right? Yeah. And like most handicapped people, they don't realize that you're a prime candidate for it because we overcompensate what we have left from what we lost and all of a sudden you start abusing that. Next thing you know, you've got your inflammation in your joints and your problems, you don't know what to do. So arthritis is caused by uh, using, like working a wheelchair and using it over using and over? Using a joint too much and the one action. Some and forms. without yeah. using a full motion, say with my arm, mm -hmm. it would keep everything working. I just use the one, all of a sudden, you know, you, you've created a problem. Now, Catherine Mulhoff, you wrote the article in the Outdoors Forever magazine just out about arthritis and yeah. researching this. You found out that what you're supposed to exercise those joints? Well, there are certain ways that you're supposed to exercise. As Rogers pointed out, it shouldn't be overexerting. Mm -hmm. um, a good steady exercise that utilizes all of the joint um, is a good way to keep the joints from stiffening up or becoming more inflamed. A lot of people have that problem. Of course, they can take aspirin and take medication. We've come up with some products that, we, that you found like these no-knot fish hooks. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, apparently, you don't have to tie them. You simply have to be able to loop the line around them, and they do work. Warming handle for a fishing rod that we've talked about before on the show, hooked up to a battery. Yep, that would Makes your joints your work nice a little bit. Warm. This thing called a reheater. Anything to keep you warmer and your joints warmer. But the interesting thing is, 
about fishing and hunting is, Catherine, you said that the Arthritis Foundation promotes people to continue fishing or hunting. Maybe take it easier, like using one of the old rubber super stretch mm -hmm. slings or carrying things rather than gripping them. But you're supposed to yeah, they as long advocate as you do it moderately. A lot of the pain, the pain is real, but ways of dealing with the pain involve having a very positive attitude, mm -hmm. releasing stress, uh, just keeping happy, doing things that you enjoy is much better for you and will kind of make you forget the pain more than just sitting around. So don't sit around and mope about it. Get outdoors. Enjoy hunting and fishing. And if you have a little pain, really, it's better to be outdoors with it and use it and Exercise that's it. how somebody with arthritis can enjoy the outdoors forever. And not let it control you. When a severe winter hits in the deer yards, which deer have the most trouble reaching the cedar boughs for food? Fawns are the first to be cut off from the food supply because a seven-month-old deer standing on its back legs can only reach boughs about five feet off the ground. Adult does can reach six feet, and bucks can often reach seven, creating a seven-foot browse line. By the way, get out your November-December issue, put it side by side with this issue. You have Dave Bowman's Midnight Vigil print in its entirety. All that snow is sort of a forecast for what we have all over the state right now. Bundle up, get outdoors for a little while this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Boy, and not be spooked by the sunlight and your motion seen through the hole in the ice. And also, you can see down through the hole best when you're in a dark shanty. Now, the wooden decoys are often handmade by carvers who have elevated fish decoys to an art form that are also used to attract pike under the ice. You have the spear by your side tied to a rope so you don't lose it. And there is a technique to tossing a spear through a hole in the ice. Not as easy as it sounds, especially when you're new to spearing and your heart's pounding when you see that pike. I got him, I got him. Don't I? I missed. Spearing, definitely a hit or miss type of fishing in Michigan outdoors. Michigan Outdoors is a production of Fred Trost Outdoors Club and Outdoors Forever with grants from the Stroh Brewery Company, makers of Stroh's and Stroh Light, fire brewed for smoother taste. Stroh's is spoken here and Auto Owners Insurance Company for all your life, home, car, and business insurance needs. Available through your local independent auto owner's agent listed in the yellow pages under insurance.